How's it going, everybody? Keeper Eric here, and just so happy that you popped onto the internet today because we're going to have a riveting conversation about one of my favorite things, frogs. Frogs are amazing creatures, from the tiniest little frogs that are smaller than a dime to the largest frog, the Goliath frog, that weighs exactly seven pounds at the max. And for those of you still eating McDonald's out there, that's 28 quarter pounders. That's a big frog. But here at Elmwood, we have some amazing frogs we're going to show you guys today. So let's go check these out. So number one is we're going to hope that everybody behaves themselves today. Uh, working with animals, it's always new and exciting. So we have three species of dart frogs here at Elmwood. We have what is called the blue and black dart frog. We have the bumblebee dart frog. And we also have a green and black dart frog. So all of these guys are what are called poison dart frogs. They get their name because actually in Western Colombia, uh, there are groups of people that actually will catch and harness the poison that these frogs create in the wild to use for blow darts for them to hunt different animals in their native area. To give you an example of how poisonous these animals can be in the wild, the type of frog they use there, the poison, uh, golden poison dart frog, which is about the size of a bottle cap, can produce enough poison to create 30 to 40 dart frogs. Uh, darts. So that provides uh, the ability for them to hunt all kinds of different uh, animals, which is the only way they can really get uh, food out there. But here in captivity, these guys really are not poisonous whatsoever. The reason why dart frogs are poisonous in the wild is because they eat toxic things like ants and beetles in the wild, which feed off of toxic plants. So these guys really aren't too toxic here. The reason why you might see me still wearing gloves, however, is frogs have very delicate skin and they can uh, get a lot of different nutrients, good or bad, through their skin. So there's all kinds of dirty stuff on my hands even after I wash my hands. I know a bunch of us are practicing social distancing. We've been doing it for a long time with our dart frogs here just to make sure that they're happy and healthy. So these guys, as you can tell, are much smaller, but they are full grown. These guys, one of their favorite things to eat are actually fruit flies. Now, not the ones that are flying around any old apples and bananas you might be leaving around your house, um, but these are specially bred fruit flies that we have in captivity that are actually flightless. So that's right, if I open up this container, a thousand fruit flies aren't gonna go everywhere and get into our hair and uh, just be really annoying. So we actually grow these guys here at Elmwood to make sure that they constantly have plenty of food for them. We also feed them very high nutrition to them as well because the old saying, you are what you eat, uh, for dart frogs and a lot of other frogs, you are what your food eats. So it's very important to have a lot of good nutrition for them. So uh, these are kind of just a small collection of our dart frogs here. Uh, and uh, you can kind of tell that they have little suction cup feet to them to help them climb real well. But most of the time these guys are gonna be hanging out either on the ground or climbing into uh, the uh, bases of the trees. A lot of these guys might not be going to the very tippy top of the treetops too often. And these guys specifically would be found in Central and South America, more in the rainforest area. So moving on, we're gonna jump on over to some tree frogs. And if you're already wondering if this video is gonna be full of frog puns and jokes, I sure hope so. Um, but this one is from our tree frog Panamanian golden frog tank. So these are gonna be our real big jumpers. So we're gonna keep an eye on them. So the tree frogs here uh, can actually jump 20 times 
their own body length. So these guys are built for living high up in the tree canopies. So right here, because he's still awake a little bit, we have a red-eyed tree frog. Uh, the name is fairly uh, obvious because of those bright red eyes. Unfortunately, when you come to the zoo, a lot of times you might notice uh, that you can't see them too well. These guys are more nocturnal. Uh, this guy just got fed some crickets, so that's why he's wide awake. He's like, hey, everybody. Um, so he has bright red eyes, and what they do for camouflage is they actually scrunch up. So if he was really scared right now, he would be scrunched up, eyes closed, and trying to look very much like a leaf, whereas he's feeling pretty calm right now um, because his eyes are open. He's kind of showing us that blue belly a little bit there, so he's feeling very comfortable. So moving on to this guy who keeps trying to climb out <laughs> a little bit. This is our Bornean eared frog. So these guys are our only frog here that is not found in Central or South America. This guy is from Borneo, the same area you would see um, orangs at. Um, so how he gets his name is if you look along his side, we're trying to make him not jump too far because he is a jumper, is you can kind of see these ridges along the sides of his head. It almost looks like uh, ears to them. Now those ridges aren't actually his ears, his ears are actually set below him, but that kind of structure is what uh, his name is from. It almost looks like he has big floppy ears. And he obviously really likes to jump because he's always investigating stuff. Our last tree frog in here, and he's kind of under the stick, this is an Amazon milky frog. So uh, his camouflage, funny enough, is to actually help look like a, no, let's see if I want to come out. There we go. So this is an Amazon milky frog. If you almost look at him a little bit, when he settles down, if you were a predator going around the treetops, what other animals normally live up high in the trees? Well, birds. So if a predator is walking by, even though it doesn't really look like uh, bark as we would know it, he kind of looks like a bird might have uh, left a little poop behind somewhere, and he doesn't look uh, very appetizing. Although if a predator does try and go after him, the reason why they're called milky frogs is that milky frogs actually produce this white, nasty tasting uh, mucus that they can uh, shoot uh, out if something's trying to eat them and uh, it tastes really bad, so uh, it makes it so that uh, the predator lets them go, or um, if a predator sees another one of these frogs again, he's like, no, that tasted nasty. I don't want to eat that guy anymore. So the last little guy we got in here is what's called, oh, we're in. <laughs> uh, all right, he can stay in there. This is the Panamanian golden frog. So funny story about Panamanian golden frogs, they're not a frog. They are actually a toad. But because of them having those long back legs um, and living very close to water, a lot of people always think that they are actually a frog. Really, scientists have been arguing over what is a frog and what is a toad uh, pretty much since we discovered what frogs and toads are. Really, the only big difference we got is that toads have much tougher skin. So if you look at him, he kind of has a drier looking skin compared to a lot of the frogs in here, um, to which gives the ability for toads to go into much drier areas um, like our native uh, North American toads. Now, the other thing too is toads normally are hoppers. They're not uh, big jumpers like our Friendly Bornean eared frog kept showing us. He very much can jump very far. Where, as you can see, this one is kind of more walking, and if he ever was uh, scared, he would uh, only be able to do a little hop, not too much. Now, Panamanian golden frogs are actually a huge success story in zoos. These guys were almost completely wiped out because of a fungus uh, that was brought over from Europe. Uh, thankfully, a lot of zoos uh, were able to get out there and save these uh, very unique, amazing creatures uh, before they were completely wiped out. Uh, a lot of uh, thanks to the Smithsonian Zoo, Detroit Zoo, and all those guys that actually have been big parts of the breeding program and actually have been starting to help uh, repopulate uh, the wild now that we have a better understanding of the fungus itself. So we'll put this lid back on real quick before our Bornean decides he wants to go and visit all the monkeys here. Um, so these guys uh, are more cricket eaters. 
The Panamanian golden frog will eat some of the fruit flies like I showed you before. But over here we have a prize example of what our big tree frogs like to eat. And those are crickets. So kind of like the fruit flies as well, it's really important for us to give them all kinds of good nutrition. Uh, we feed them Rapashi gut loader, which as it kind of gives the name away, it fills their guts full of good vitamins and minerals so that our frogs are always happy and healthy. We also will give uh, produce like lettuce and carrots and all that sort of stuff to the crickets as well because good healthy crickets mean good healthy frogs. All right. So before we move on, we're gonna uh, go to our first question that we have for you guys. But real quick, we're gonna have a joke break, okay? So what did the frog do when his car broke down? He got it towed away. I know, you're all laughing it up right now. So moving on, uh, we have a very fun question to introduce our uh, next topic on frogs, and it is what process do frogs go through to change from a tadpole to adult? So the first one is A, magic, B, metamorphosis, C, the force, and D, the power of song. And uh, we also have uh, Ellington uh, also asked us this question, so I hope uh, they have a good answer as well because uh, this is exactly what a baby frog is, is what is called a tadpole. Um, it kind of looks like a little gumdrop with a long tail at the end of it. Um, and it kind of more looks like a fish. So I hope you guys all got your answers in. And the answer is B, metamorphosis. So what metamorphosis is, is the simple concept of that a baby frog, an adult frog, look very different. Even for these guys in uh, the jungle, what they do is uh, they'll find a nice spot to lay their eggs, and in those eggs, basically what looks like a little tiny fish hatches out. So a fish and a frog are very two different things. And just like these frogs that, as you can tell, don't live in a body of water, these tadpoles actually have to live within a body of water. So this helps the frogs kind of get a head start in life. Uh, a lot of these guys, like the Panamanian golden frog, uh, they can have thousands of babies. And that's just because, unfortunately, a lot of things eat them out there. So it's good to have thousands of babies because it puts the odds in your favor. So with these tadpoles, we're going to then slowly grow in this water and turn into what we consider more as frogs. So here's a nice example of one of our habitats here. This is our dart frog tank. So these are all the other bumblebee poison dart frogs, blue and black dart frogs, the green and black dart frogs all in here. So currently we aren't trying to breed more frogs here. As you can see, we have plenty of these guys, but some interesting things to look at when you're looking at this tank is you'll see what are uh, we call cocoa huts, which are these kind of rounded little dome homes and inside is a petri dish with some water. So for the blue and black dart frogs, they very much in the wild would be going and finding a little puddle of water underneath a log or anything like that to lay their eggs in. So this is to encourage them to still lay their eggs because we want to still have them to naturally go through the cycle. Also, we have uh, guys like the green and black and the bumblebees which can lay their eggs on leaves as well above a pool of water where the tadpoles will actually hatch and fall into the body of water but one of the big things that they like are actually these special plants that you might see scattered around here as well called a bromeliad so these plants live high up in trees in the jungle and what they do is their leaves are designed to actually catch water and create a little pool of water in the base of it and the frogs will actually lay their eggs in the bromeliads. Now, you might not think that frogs are good mothers. They actually can be some of the most protective, best mothers out there. There are certain frog species, like the strawberry poison dart frog, that will lay one egg in five bromeliads and every day go and check on them 
And for a tiny little frog that's actually smaller than your thumbnail, this frog can walk up to two miles a day, which, I mean, a lot of us aren't even doing that currently. But this little dart frog will actually go to each bromeliad and lay a little egg to help feed the tadpole. So these guys are great, great mothers. Uh, and that just helps uh, put them on success. Also, we have some fun orchids and all kinds of ferns. And we actually have misters that constantly miss the frogs daily. So we don't have to go in there and keep kind of that rainforest feel. Because as you can imagine, a rainforest is much wetter than our Pennsylvania climate. So moving over here, we have some amazing tree frog tank. So as you can, the first thing you might notice is that there's actually a big pool in here. And this is very uh, important for the tree frogs because since they're higher up in the trees, um, they don't really like to be on the ground too much. And the water here actually helps with the humidity and helps keep the tree frogs more of that kind of feel as if they're in the tops of the trees versus the dart frogs that are going to be more in kind of the leaf litter at the bottom of the trees. You also might notice little baby fish swimming around. We have some fish in here that in case any of their food like fruit flies and crickets jump on in there, uh, the fish can also get a snack and help keep the tank nice and clean. Uh, throughout this tank too we have a uh, amazing uh, little uh, red eye tree frogs, Bornean ear tree frogs, and the milky tree frog, along with uh, the Panamanian golden frogs, all live in here. Uh, so Alyssa is asking, do all frogs live in water? And that's a great question. So not all frogs live in water, but all frogs do need water. So the rainforest has thousands and thousands of different types of frogs and toads in it because even though um, it's not a giant swamp everywhere, pretty much constantly rain is raining down upon them and helping keeping uh, their skin nice and moist, which frogs, since they have that softer skin, desperately need. Also, uh, Megan is asking why are they at the zoo? Great question. So the reason why these frogs are at the zoo is one of two reasons. So we have a lot of our frogs here as educational purposes. These guys uh, were already born in captivity. They weren't taken from the wild or anything like that, but born in captivity. And we use them so that we can educate the public like you guys on why it's so important uh, to help protect not just frogs uh, in our own home, but across the world. The other one too is those Panamanian golden frogs. We're getting a better handle on uh, exactly how we can help prevent chytrid fungus from attacking them in the wild, but if we didn't bring the Panamanian golden frogs into captivity, and the ones we have here were born in captivity, but the initial ones that were brought in, if we didn't bring them in, the Panamanian golden frog would be currently extinct. So those are the main reasons why we have these frogs here. Mary, how old do they get? So we have a wide variety of ages here, um, but most of the dart frogs can live anywhere from four to six years. Most of the tree frogs, five to eight years. And actually the Panamanian golden frog can live upwards of 12 years. Uh, and Regina says, how high can they jump? Great question. So like I said, the uh, Panamanian golden frogs, they're not going very far. They're great climbers, but they can't hop very far. If you watch, the dart frogs can, uh, if they were really scared, could probably jump twice their body length, but a tree frog could jump 20 times its own body size, which uh, for the red eyes can be upwards of a couple feet if they really needed to go. Emily, can they swim? Yes, they can. So even though uh, most of these guys aren't going to be near big bodies of water. All of these guys do have the capability to swim. Uh, the tree frogs are actually much better at it, which is why they have the pool of water. The dart frogs, they can swim, but uh, they more doggy paddle. Sophia, how many colors can tree frogs have? Oh, great question. So there are thousands and thousands of different color combinations on the tree frog, but the red-eyed tree frog can actually change their colors slightly to help out with camouflage 
uh, to deal with stress, to kind of communicate a little between each other, and they can go through a, different varieties of greens because obviously not every leaf in the jungle is quite the same color, and since red eyes really need to have that good camouflage, uh, it's important for them to really fit into whatever background they got. Kate, how do they stick to things so well? Great question. So. If you look at this little bumblebee right here, they have specialized toe pads that actually have the ability to grab onto the tiniest imperfections on the glass. So that means where we see a smooth glass, and I mean, if I tried to climb it, I would fall on my face, but there are actually thousands of little cracks that their toe pads are able to kind of grab a hold of and actually be able to uh, use the imperfections because all of these guys can climb uh, straight up this glass. Liam and Ronan, do these frogs like humans? Yes, they do. Um, funny enough is they very much know when it is feeding time, when I'm opening up the lid, uh, kind of as you saw with the Bornean ear frog, uh, they very much like to jump out uh, because basically right now, uh, they can tell the difference a little bit between keepers that normally take care of them and keepers that don't. And whenever they see keepers that do, they can rush towards the front of their glass they do recognize certain people and they can get a little so overly excited that they try and jump out through the top because uh, they're so excited by food. And also uh, a number of facilities actually have the ability to use that excitement for training. Yes, I just said that. You can train a frog. A lot of facilities can actually ring a bell to tell the frogs to come on out. And when the frogs come on out to uh, the bell, they then get a treat, which is very helpful in much bigger, uh, much heavier planted exhibits than this to make sure that you have all your frogs. Amelia, what are some of their adaptations? So that is a great one. So obviously one of the big ones for the poison dart frogs is uh, their ability to kind of process the toxic ants and beetles from the wild so that they can actually secrete a poison through their skin. Uh, even though uh, everyone uh, can kind of see the big bullfrogs and all that with the long tongues, uh, the dart frogs have that ability too. Uh, their tongues are actually <laughs> a bit bigger than their heads as well. So even if a fruit fly was uh, even an inch ahead of this little bumblebee that's right down there, he would actually uh, be able to grab one fast as lightning actually the only time we've actually been able to truly see it is if we put it on slow motion on our cameras leah do they have names uh yes they do uh we have uh kind of group names a lot of times for the blue and blacks and the green and blacks but we do have names for a number of our tree frogs uh like bayamax Sophia, how old are they? So like uh, I said a little previously, they, we have a wide range of different uh, ages in here just because we did breed uh, a couple of them in captivity. Uh, our youngest frog in here is probably currently two years, uh, two to three years old and our oldest one uh, is uh, probably about eight or nine. Isaiah and Ether, how long are their legs? Great question. So it really depends on uh, the group themselves. A tree frog leg is actually longer than their body and that's why they have those big jumps like our red eyes are, um, their body, uh, the one that I showed you is probably three inches long and his leg is probably three and a half inches where the dart frogs here you can kind of see are more about an inch they're they're not as great as jumpers as the tree frogs but they can hop on down all right Gretchen what are their predators so in the wild even though they are poisonous they do still have predators um, so for some of these guys um, their biggest predator is uh, snakes. There are snakes that have developed the ability not to really feel the effects of poison. Um, also, there are some frogs across the world that are toxic and animals love that. So there are different animals that will actually put uh, chewed up frogs onto their fur or their uh, little uh, spikes or quills so that if an animal tries to eat them, they taste really bad and won't try and uh, eat them again. 
Okay, and then finally, our last question is Carla. What is the reason for their coloring? Great question. So the reason for their coloring is, uh, it's kind of a warning signal, kind of a, I'm so colorful, I don't need to hide. You just try and eat me, it's gonna end bad for you. So it's kind of a warning signal for all the animals saying, I don't need to hide because you shouldn't eat me because if you do, it's gonna make you sick and not want to eat me ever again. So that's a great question. And then one more fun frog joke for you is why are frogs always happy? Because they eat whatever bugs them. Thank you guys so much. Uh, once again, if you guys have any more questions uh, you have, please uh, put them down on the Facebook Live uh, comment section. We'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. Also, if you have any fun frog puns and frog jokes, we would love to see them there as well. Thank you guys for stopping by today and can't wait to see you the next time.